Radiant is a startup developing Kaleidos, a portable 1.2 megawatt microreactor. Kaleidos can be up and running within an hour, replacing diesel generators used by remote communities, backup power, or relief during disaster scenarios. Our reactor is being designed with Sim Engine, our in-house tool fusing reactor digital twins with aerospace-derived hardware-in-the-loop simulators. Let's take a look inside Kaleidos to see how this capability accelerates reactor and control systems development. Kaleidos produces heat through a controlled fission chain reaction in the graphite-moderated core. A compressor forces helium through the core in the primary loop. Helium is an inherently safe heat transfer fluid because it doesn't become radioactive. The primary loop transfers heat to a supercritical CO2 Brayton cycle, producing power in response to customer load. The fission reaction is controlled by the motion of 16 control drums in a ring around the core, each containing an arc of neutron poison. Meltdown-proof triso fuel particles are arranged in compact cylinders stacked in fuel channels. State-of-the-art multi-physics modeling tools from the Department of Energy's NEMS program are used to produce high-accuracy estimates of reactor criticality fuel performance, and temperature distribution under a range of operating conditions. Reduced order models derived from these high fidelity outputs allow real-time simulation of the reactor and its control system with SimEngine. SimEngine's real-time modeling capability enables direct coupling with physical systems, demonstrated here by the integration of a control drum into the sim. Position commands are sent to the drum, while its real position is encoded and fed back into the system. Any mismatch between the physical and simulated system is used to improve modeling fidelity, allowing for rapid risk buy-down. As it runs, the simulation is keeping track of all reactor temperatures, including the core, its control drums, and the pressure vessel. An air jacket allows direct passive cooling of the pressure vessel under fault scenarios. Insulation reduces heat leak under normal operation and allows for the use of low temperature, cost-effective shielding materials. Parameters such as core reactivity, vessel and fuel temperatures, and output power are plotted alongside the simulation. SimEngine will now demonstrate integrated execution of the reactor digital twin with its real-time control system as it goes through a startup. Drums are rotated to insert reactivity until criticality is achieved. At this point, the neutron population starts growing exponentially. When the core starts to heat up due to the release of fission energy, the control system further turns the drums in order to maintain criticality. The drums move by an additional 30 degrees to offset the core's negative temperature feedback coefficient. The turbo machinery ramps up to speed as the core reaches target temperature, and a circuit breaker connects the microgrid electrical load. Unlike traditional nuclear power plants, Kaleidos is capable of rapid load throttling or efficiently following a fluctuating electric demand. This is accomplished by adjusting the machinery shaft speed, the helium mass flow rate, and by continuously moving the control drums to modulate core heat generation. Now, SimEngine will inject a helium motor malfunction to demonstrate a pressurized loss of coolant. Under this kind of failure, the temperature of the fuel and vessel are the most limiting safety criteria. As the fault is detected, the control drums shut in to terminate the fission chain reaction and the air jacket opens, allowing heat rejection of the pressure vessel via a natural convection current. A small amount of decay heat is still produced by fission products. After the fuel temperature peaks in a few hours, the entire core cools to ambient temperatures. The fuel never exceeds 950 degrees, well below the 1600 degree limit established by Triso Fuel Qualification. With SimEngine, Radiant is progressively integrating all Kaleidos hardware into this real-time simulation, continuously building a safety case derived from real-world verification mechanical, thermal hydraulics, electrical, and nuclear engineering teams are working towards a fuel demonstration in Idaho in 2026. I believe in continuous testing and iteration. You know, we absolutely achieved the, the initial goals for the test were to understand the performance of the pump, be able to put that into a simulation system. We're gonna to continue to use that to develop these different failure scenario models but only through iteration do we really perfect uh, products and make it highly reliable. Picking a cooling fluid that has intrinsic safety properties 
pushes us towards a architecture of a reactor called a high temperature gas reactor. And so you need to flow that gas through the nuclear reactor to keep it cool and extract power from it. We need something that pushes that helium continuously through, and that is a motor. So our helium circulator is a purpose-built motor that's meant to operate at the temperatures that the nuclear reactor runs at and the pressure that the nuclear reactor runs at. So we've been working on the helium loop test and the helium circulator for a really long time actually. The helium circulator was the first thing that we really had to nail down at Radiant. The reason for that is that the reactor is effectively solid state. There are very few moving parts intentionally so that the reactor can operate for years without maintenance. And the one exception to that is the helium circulator, so it's intentionally the most complex piece of machinery in the primary loop. The main objective for the helium loop test was to test the performance of the circulator in the conditions that it would see in Kaleidos, so high temperature and high pressure. We wanted to make sure that the performance of the circulator matched what was predicted by CFD. And so we did that by testing it in real world conditions. Accomplishing this test was great, not just for actually performing a check on the hardware specifically, but also building up the infrastructure for the team and being able to perform this kind of testing. We had to go through hardware builds, software implementation. It was a way to be able to build and establish the infrastructure and the processes for the entire team to be able to perform tests like this and continue building upon tests in the future and be able to execute even faster as a company. I love this engineering team. We've got a lot of really, really sharp people and a lot of really open-minded people. Our crown jewel piece of hardware, the circulator, is operating awesomely. I'm really confident in our, our methodology for bringing this loop up to speed that we built something that's like truly safe. Getting our bearings on how to design a high pressure, high temperature system. Kind of the main design goal of every system that we put into the reactor is safety above everything else. So it must be fundamentally intrinsically safe if it's going to be a part of the design.